The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, let's see, we got this mail. Comics versus wrestling. All right, I'm game. Uh, hello, Perch Perchington. The commie dad. Short for comics, not, uh, never mind. Okay. Thanks for clarifying there. Um, I, um, somebody, uh, there, there's a couple of people out there like, oh, Perch sounds like a communist. I, I don't know. I like money. So <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I don't, oh, uh, well. Um, I also don't like, so I actually, I'm probably, as, I'm probably further away from that than I think, um, many of you, quite frankly, as listeners, I, I do like money. Um, I think about how to get money and come up with strategies for how to get money. And I also uh, don't like to be told what to do. Uh, I, I absolutely hate, hate being told what to do. It's a little bit, by the way, why when I do some of these videos and then people respond like, you're telling me I can't be mad. I'm like, I'm not telling you that. And it gets me, gets me legitimately angry because, um, I, I, that is not what I'm saying. And I, I do understand why that would irritate you. It would irritate me too, but that's literally not what I'm saying at all. Uh, but I, I always hate it. Don't, don't tell me what to do. Anyway, let's get to this mail. It says, I was thinking about uh, two interests that we have in common, wrestling and comics, and how they seem eerily similar. Yes, I think wrestlers are similar to comics, but not in the way most people say, such as long-form story, action-oriented, and basically being a soap opera for 12-year-old boys of all ages and genders. 12-year-old um, boys of all ages and genders. What? Okay, anyway, that's fine. No, I think they mirror each other in another way. Kayfabe, or the performance outside of the performance. I notice this when I look at the success of Eric July and to some extent Rob Liefeld. What do these guys have in common? They are all characters. They perform and play up to an audience. They also all, they're all, they're, they are, oh, sorry, I'm butchering the sense. They are also all faces to heels. Everyone hates a good heel and wants to see the face beat the ever-loving poop out of them. In this case, though, everyone wants to see these guys beat, quote-unquote, mainstream comics and media. Air July versus race bin characters, etc. Hmm, here comes the money. Yeah, everybody loves a good few they can wrap their head around. I think mainstream comics can learn a lot and benefit from turning writers into characters in a grander story, but the comics still have to be good. When Batista returned in 2017, he had a lot of go-away heat because his matches weren't all that interesting or fun, but CM Punk always had heat and love because he was one of the most compelling performers in the ring. I'm not sure with, the, with his reaction on AEW, I think people are, um, I think it's similar, actually, uh, we, we can, we can debate, uh, um, well, actually, let's, let's get into that. I think, uh, you know, the Batista, this, this moment, uh, Dave Batista, uh, had been built up pretty decently popular wrestlers, part of, uh, uh, this evolution stable. So got the rub off of, uh, of, uh, Triple H and, and Ric Flair a little bit. Um, and, uh, he, he kind of been built up along with Randy Orton. And he, uh, he, he got to be very popular. And then he went out and did some movies and he did Guardians of the Galaxy and he seemed to kind of disappear somewhat randomly from wrestling for a little bit. If there's one thing the wrestling fans dislike, it's a feeling like they're being blown off or something better. And this is the case, you've seen it with The Rock, with John Cena, with Batista and other things. Now The Rock is, is entertaining enough and has managed to work really hard to kind of convince the fans because he's come back a few times that no, he actually does love wrestling and he loves the fans and same thing with Cena to some extent. I think there's been more of a, I'm not just escaping wrestling. Whereas a Hulk Hogan, or in some cases Batista, and now we're going to see, I guess, Seth Rollins, where, where it will go. Um, there's a little bit of a sense of, you know, you have, to, you have to tread that line very carefully not to disrespect the fans in wrestling, which is a good parallel to comics as well. So uh, CM Punk, um, you know, would do the shoot-style interviews where he would go and he would... Uh, reveal backstage secrets and other kind of things. And, and, you know, that, that's what he would do. And, um, that, that's popular with fans. I mean, Brian Pillman, uh, you know, God rest his soul would do that many, many years ago with the, I respect you Booker man and kind of the other stuff he would do. Um, but, uh, and so, so CM Punk got that reputation, but CM Punk left WWE. I think he had a lot of people on his side because WWE was, you know, was known as being exploitive and, and people really wanted the Indies to survive, but, you know, places like TNA and others were just too cheesy and, and they just didn't, uh, I don't know, it just, it, it didn't, it didn't, it, it was hard to get really attached to it. So AEW gets a bunch of, you know, pretty popular characters, you know, Christian Cage and Chris Jericho and uh, Brian uh, Danielson and, and, uh, and, and these, these wrestlers, John Moxley, 
and others that uh, had been, you know, in the eyes of the fans, kind of disrespected to a decent amount. And CM Punk, um, you know, I think went there and it was hugely popular and everything else. But very quickly, you know, there's there's heat with him and other members of the roster. And then he left, you know, suspended or left or whatever it happens to be for a while. And so he's starting to get kind of that Dave Batista when they announced he was returning. Um, I guess he got booed pretty hard, even though he's returning in Chicago, which in theory is his hometown. But um, it's an interesting it's an interesting aspect. I think you could draw a lot of parallels, by the way, to Bendis and and some of the you know, writers, creators that come back and and how it all fits. Anyway, sorry, this was entertaining to all of like ten percent of you, but uh, but there you go. I went deep. All right, back to back to the mail. It says two of my favorite matches of all time are his Lesnar match and his match against all of the Shield because I truly believed he was going to die. We're talking about CM Punk. Imagine a star with the pull and interest of an Eric July uh, generated from outside sources. Uh, but the compelling stories of a Chris Claremont or Peter David. My God, that's a firecracker. That's the disruption. That's the guy who, where despite the politics, despite the online vitriol, Marvel and DC have to stand up, take notice, and pay. Started to feel like I was shooting a promo at the end, but whatever. Um, I wonder what you think of this. Can comics make writers and artists into compelling characters? It is possible and will result in sales. Will it elevate the business, of course? Hugs and kisses and fuck Arby's, whatever that is. Good for you. Um, okay, so um, yes, uh, it can be done, but it's like playing with fire or gasoline or whatever analogy you want to use. It will be tough. It'll be very, very tough to do. I think that uh, the problem is when you create characters, as we've seen with wrestling and with comics, you know, you saw this with a Rob Liefeld or a Todd McFarlane or those people in the image revolution, you get this... Um, it's a double-edged sword because it's because if you build up somebody's ego, you're building up somebody's ego and, and that can turn on you really fast. And I think we've seen that happen in comics for sure. So you have to be careful. I, I mean, I think a more recent example is a little bit Donny Cates. I think Marvel was building up Donny Cates a little bit as a, you know, kind of a rebel. He's punk rock and he's a, oh my God, you're not ready for this. And if you looked at some of the promos he shot, for, uh, you know, the King in Black storyline and, and, and that event and everything else, it had that feel to it. It, it had the feel that they were building up a character. Now, the challenge is, they, as they built up that character, you know, Donnie built up himself. So, you know, he, he took on that persona a little bit too much. And so, you know, then it's like, you know, well, my persona is about a guy who's going to get absolutely plastered and show up and, you know, pee at somebody's birthday party. And it's like, yeah, that's that 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 can be a fun persona, but don't actually do that. Um, and then, you know, if you actually do that, you're going to run yourself out of the business or, you know, it, it's some of the other stuff you see, you know, other creators of like, well, my persona is that I'm, you know, super, you know, uh, sexually fluid. OK, fine. In your personal life, that's good. But if you take that and you, you know, send photos of what you're doing to you know members of your staff. Uh, or your teammates, or you you do this out in a bar at a con. Um, you're you're now crossing kind of this personal persona with work, and and so I think you just have to be careful because, like we see with anything, the the character itself can can get to be a life of its own and a monster, and then before you know it, you're you're dealing with super crazy shit uh, like you know we have seen. So that's that's the that's the challenge there. Um, is there, there's money in it. If you could do it right. I think, look, the, you know, DC says Bendis is coming. That wasn't a porno ad. That was actually an attempt to, to build up some hype around a name, make the, make the writer bigger than, bigger than what he was. But, but again, the challenge is, um, it's just, I, I think it's probably safer to not, you know, you look at Tom King, uh, building up the mythology of like, there's so many death threats because of what I did with, uh, Batman, Catwoman. Um, in issue 50 of Batman that I have to hire a security guard. And a security guard is a paid, for all intents and purposes, friend slash actor. Uh, wasn't an actor, but just just playing a role of a security guard as opposed to their, his life was actually in jeopardy. I think that's dangerous. I think it, it blows up the ego of the creator in an unhealthy way. And I think that it um, it has the definitely the tendency to, to appear cheesy to the fans who just want a good comic. And, uh, and I think I, I, particularly the one I would kind of really advise against, and I'm seeing more and more of it. Tom Taylor did it, uh, recently, you know, King did it, uh, Zeb Wells is kind of trying to do it with Spider-Man. It's this idea of this comic book is so shocking and so controversial that, uh, there are death threats and I'm going to, I will be safe in public. 
I, that's a dumb bear to, 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 to bait. I just think that's stupid. Don't, don't, you know, it's, it's not healthy. You can say my book is super controversial. My book is going to be, uh, it, you know, it, it, people are going to have a very polarizing reaction to it. When you start to wander into, you know, the fans are trying to kill me. I, I would say only pull that card if, if you actually have death threats. And by death threats, I don't mean like somebody on Twitter says you should just go away and die. I understand that's, that's unpleasant to see. Um, definitely over the line shouldn't happen all the rest, but it's just not healthy to really hype up this idea that your life is in jeopardy because of crazy fans. You're, you're, I think that ends nowhere good. And if anything, it, I mean, among the many, many reasons why it's bad, I would advise any creator because I've had creators tell me, uh, you know, one creator in particular, uh, who reached out, no, not somebody who's been interviewed. Um, to say, Hey, I'm doing this comic. And I, I think, you know, it might be kind of fun to say that it's going to make people so mad that, you know, my life is in jeopardy and I'm having to get protection, please protection. I'm like, I, I, no, don't, don't, don't take, you do not need it. And thankfully it took my advice by the way, but don't, don't do it. Um, it's, it's, it, it's bad for you. It's a bad look. Um, and quite frankly, there may come a point where your life actually may be in jeopardy and somebody may be literally putting death threats, uh, at you. And you want people to take you seriously. This is a, you know, uh, it's the sky is falling kind of effect. Don't don't go out there and, and hype up something untrue or, you, you know, you may have a struggle when you need people to believe the truth. So that that's the way I would say it. Anyway, there you go. That's what I think. But uh, thank you for letting me talk a little bit about wrestling. Always fun. Anyway, what do all you think? Let me know in the comments below. Like and subscribe. And thanks for listening.